morning and happy Easter Sunday to everyone joining us here in worship and on Zoom. Welcome to this glorious Sunday. Um, my name is Cindy Nauer. I'll be your liturgist today. We have Reverend Dr. Fred we Weidman preaching today for us, Dr. Sonny Nabel and Praise Band, and I think Betty up top. I can't quite see running <laughs> the audio. So our team is in place. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, if you're new to the gardens, we all need a pa parking pass on our car. So if you don't have one, please see Jackie, the usher, and get that parking pass into your car. It would be unpleasant to have a boot at the end of service. Um, we have excitement today after service. We have an Easter egg hunt for the children in the yard adjacent to the church. And on that note, I wanna mention that although the bulletin states we will be having Sunday school, we will not be having Sunday school today. Looks like the Easter egg hunt will be in place of Sunday school today. There will be a ch children's message during the service though, however. Um, Reverend Fred has the pleasure of being on vacation next week. And we have the pleasure of having uh, Reverend Linda Terry Chard preach with us on April 16th. And then we're going to have an interfaith swap on the Sabbath weekend of April 21st through 23rd. We will be going over to the Reformed Temple of Forest Hills. Reverend Fred will be preaching and the church will, choir will be singing. And then on Sunday we will be here and Rabbi Mark Kaiserman will preach and their choir will be singing for us. So it should be a fun Sabbath weekend. Um, I'm going to just bring everyone's attention to the other announcements in the bulletin and let us move on with worship today with Reverend Fred and his opening prayer. Takes me a minute, excuse me. Let me add about the children that the cradle room is open downstairs. Parents are welcome to bring kids down there at any time. There are uh, some coloring and other activities, I understand it, and I believe there's stuff on the back table as well. I wanna add my special welcome to those who are worshiping with us here in person and online, and a very special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This is the day that the Lord has made, Easter Sunday. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and let us pray. O God of life, O God of new life, O God of resurrection life, we thank you for the joy of Easter. We thank you even for the struggle and challenges of Holy Week and Good Friday that we've marked. It's all about life, life in all its dimensions, life together with you. Be with us as we worship and celebrate. Be with us as we go on with our lives firm in our confidence that neither life nor death nor anything else can separate us from the love and the strength that is ours in Jesus Christ. And let everybody say, Amen. 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 Please stand and join me in the call to worship that's found in your bulletin. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather today to shout. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Out of the doom of death and despair, victory comes. Glory appears. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us turn on to our pilgrim hymnals, either blue or red, in the pew next to you. Uh, if you're not a regular church goer here, there's one close by. Maybe they can help you find it. Okay, good. And let's all turn to hymn number 182. This is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, verses 1 through 4. Free! 
I invite you to remain standing and please join with me in the prayer of confession as found in your bulletin. I will begin. God calls us to step out of the tombs that consume us into, into the, the fullness, fullness of life in the living Christ. Christ. Yet we do not always remember the creative power of resurrection. We bury our joy. We give in to the ways of chaos. We shut ourselves off from the ways of peace, love, and hope. Be with us, O oh God, in this brief time of silent reflection. and be with us as we sing. Siblings in Christ, the joy of Easter is the joy of forgiveness and freedom from all that and all who would hold you back. We are God's beloved, saved and freed for life and life abundant. Live in that fullness. Live in that peace. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Lord. Peace, peace. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go too far away. It's a big Peter. Can you tell, we like to have fun here at Church in the Gardens. Um, this is Angels Rolled the Stone Away, arranged by Jester Hairston. And uh, yeah, we like to have fun. You'll see very soon.
um, we had lots of soloists. Everyone got a turn. That was Ira Epsil, uh, our, our soloist on the tenor section. Welcome. Our priest reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the church at Colossae. Chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. God bless our hearing of the word. Our gospel reading lesson for this Easter Sunday is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciples outran the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned to him and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he had said these things to her. This is the good news. I'd like to invite Reverend 
I'd like to invite the kids who are here to come up, if you're willing and able. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. I'm going to pretend I want to talk to the kids. Really, we just want to get a count of how many are here for the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> yeah, here, come right on up. You know what? I think we're going to have a lot. Maybe you guys come way up here, okay? And then others, come on up. Good to see you, Maggie. Good to see you. Yeah, come on. All right, we got a lifeguard in the house. That's good to know. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Come on up. Hello there, hello. Yeah, you know your way around here, huh? Come on, come on. All right, come on up. All right, welcome, guys. Happy Easter. Okay. Well, what just happened? That's right. <laughs> Dad didn't pay the bill. But what happened? Lights went out, right? A blackout. Yeah, blackout. How, what does that feel like when there's a blackout? It feels dark. Does it feel a little scary sometimes? Yeah. Well, I see a lot of heads shaking. I hear someone else saying, not really. Yeah, it can feel a little scary. And I also feel like, what can we do? If you can't watch TV, what else is there? <laughs> what can we do? Well, I want you to know, whenever, whenever you feel a little scared, or you feel like you don't know what to do, or what's going on, I want you to always know that God is there for you. Always remember that Christ is alive. When we talk about Christ, we talk about the living Christ. Christ is there for you. Jesus knows what it is to be hurt, what it is to even be a little scared. He knows that. And Jesus is alive, always, for you and for me. You going to remember that? Yeah, okay, yeah, you're going to remember that. Now, I want to do our great Easter call together, and I want all the adults to help us, okay? Let's say it together. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 All right. All right, guys, thank you so much. So we're going to ask you to go back to your seats. You're going to have to do like the adults and pretend you care what I'm saying now. And then we're going to go on and keep having fun on Easter Sunday, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Now, I love the gospel lesson we just heard. Having said that, I suppose that's a little cliche for the preacher on Easter Sunday morning to say, I love the gospel lesson. <laughs> but it's true. And I love this particular gospel lesson from this particular gospel of John, chapter 20. And I love it for lots of reasons having to do with Mary Magdalene. I loved the choir piece, and I love what it says about Mary Magdalene. Having to do with what those angels say, having to do with that unnamed disciple, having to do with how Jesus appears and what Jesus says to Mary Magdalene. But I want to just share a part of what I love about this lesson and how it hit me this year, this Time around as I was preparing for this service. Let's look together at this Easter message, this powerful Easter message that has everything to do with life and life anew in our world and in our lives. 
what we've heard this morning are two descriptions, two amazing descriptions of Christ, of the living Christ, and of what Easter is all about, and yet astonishingly, they are almost never read together or discussed together. Yet here it is, and here we've heard about Christ being, I'm quoting now from our first lesson, Christ being the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in Christ all things in heaven and earth were created. I wonder if you heard that as Cindy was reading it. We usually get that sort of reading around Christmas time from this very familiar verse at the very beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I wonder if that's familiar to any of you. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What came into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overtake it. Whether it's Christmas or whether it's Easter, whether it's Paul's letter to the church at Colossae or whether it's the Gospel of John, whether it's the embodied, fleshy, very mortal Jesus of Nazareth, they did kill him after all, or whether it's the cosmic, divine, eternal Christ through whom all creation is created and who came down to be born among us from the Virgin Mary and crucified. It's all God. And it's somehow all good. That's why we call it Good Friday. And it's all about life. Now what's so notable about this gospel story that we read on this Easter Sunday morning. What's so notable is that it starts, and we started talking with the kids about this, it starts in darkness. As Cindy read it, the first line of our gospel story this Easter Sunday, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. Christmas, Easter, creation, resurrection. What's the connection? What's the connection? It's all about light. The light of life from out of the darkness. And what do they say? At least all the elders around me when I was growing up would say it. The darkest hour comes right before the dawn. The darkest hour, the darkest darkness comes right before the dawn. And that, sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, brings us to the last biblical text I'm going to cite. I promise I'm going to stop jumping around the Bible after bringing this one up. The whole thing about it being dark, as this Easter story from the Gospel of John tells us it was on Easter Sunday morning. Maybe Jesus was raised in Seattle, I don't know, it's always dark up there. <laughs> on this morning, when Jesus, risen and alive, met Mary, the whole business about the darkest hour being right before the dawn, all of that brings us to the story of creation itself. And I quote from the very first verse of the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep. End of story. Let's all go home. 
And a wind or spirit from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, God spoke the word, let there be light. And there was light. Christ is in creation. Indeed, Christ is the firstborn of all creation. For in Christ, all things on heaven and on earth were created. Christ is all wrapped up in creation, over it, above it, under it, next to it. Christ is all about creation, and Christ is all about Easter, because life, all life is Christ, and Christ is all about life. Ain't no Good Friday going to hold Christ down. Ain't no hatred or killing or violence going to be enough to keep Christ down, to keep Christ hidden. Christ is about creation, bringing, forming life from out of darkness. And Christ is about life and new life in the face of darkness. While it is still dark on that Easter Sunday morning, and while and wherever it may be dark in our world and in your life, Christ is there. Christ is alive. Christ is calling you and calling us to resurrection. Christ is in our lives when all is sunshine and smiles and Easter glory. And I pray that all is smiles and sunshine and Easter glory for you today and in your lives. And I pray that you remember and know it well at all times. Know it deep down inside of you that Christ is in creation and recreation. Christ is in Easter and new life. And Christ is in our lives wherever and whenever it is dark. Wherever it might still be dark. On this great and glorious Easter morning, on this first day of the rest of your life, I ask you, this gospel lesson asks you, where is it still dark for you? Be honest now with yourself, with God, with the living Christ. On this Easter morning, when our gospel lesson tells us that it's all happening while it is still dark. I ask you, where is it dark for you? Well, then there, in that place, Easter is. Welcome Easter all the more there where it is still dark. Welcome the risen Christ. Welcome God's new creation for what Easter tells us, especially what this Easter message tells us from the Gospel of John, tells us that Christ is there for you. Christ is life, creating life, resurrecting life, renewing life, life and light. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overtake it. Oh, it can try. They tried on Good Friday. And all you have to do is walk down the street or open up your computer. And you know they're trying now. Guess what? It didn't work. And it doesn't work. The light shines in every darkness. That's what we know. That's how we live. And so we say, and so we shout it out, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. 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 Please turn back to your pilgrim hymnals. Let's turn to hymn number 192, The Day of Resurrection, verses 1 and 3. Please stand and sing with us.
I invite you to remain standing as you're willing and able for our prayers. As we enter into a time of prayer today, I want to add a prayer of thanks for our stewardship committee, our altar guild and flower committee, and to all members and friends responsible for the special Easter decorations, and in particular, our beautiful new white pyramids draping our altar and lectern and pulpit. A portion of our Thanksgiving and Christmas special offering this past year went to these. Your support made these beautiful coverings so fitting for Easter and for special services and celebrations possible. Thank you and thank God for you. We pray to the God of creation and recreation, the God of life and new life, the God of resurrection, glory. We thank you, O oh God, for this most glorious day, for every day that creation springs anew. We thank you that this day and every day brings the opportunity to walk with you in newness of life and in the power of resurrection life. We thank you for our church, the church in the gardens, and for all that we do to bring the joy and power of the resurrection into our lives and into the lives of all in our community and world. And we thank you for all of our partners in ministry, including the First Presbyterian Church of Forest Hills, who worshiped with us here on Good Friday, and for the whole Forest Hills interfaith community at this holy time of year. We pray for all civic and religious leaders, that they may be moved by and act on your life-giving wisdom for life and life abundant for all people and for the whole of creation. We pray for all who are suffering from the fear and violence that so marks our nation, and we pray for those who are contributing to those fears and hatreds and violence, that they too may be moved by your life-giving sacrifice and love. Comfort those in need of comfort. You have suffered and know pain, and, the, and challenge those in need of challenging with your resurrection light and your resurrected life, that death cannot conquer and that ways of death and violence cannot hold down. We pray for those who are sick and recovering from illness and injury, including Philia, Hannah, Karen, Millicent, Noriko, Connie, Adele, Anne, and Dora. We thank you that Ernie is back among us. We pray for all who grieve or are suffering loss of any kind, including those mourning the loss of Alicia and of William and all who have run the race and are now glorying evermore in resurrection life. We thank you for all the profound and simple joys of Easter, for new furnishings in our sanctuary, for Easter egg hunts in our yard, for the smiles and hugs and bonnets and baskets, with you, we affirm all that is life-giving and life-affirming, and to you, we bring all of our prayers. Hear all that has already been said aloud, O God. Hear all that we hold on our hearts, and hear all that we call out aloud now. And be with us now, O oh God, as we pray, just as Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. As we move into a time of offering, I invite us all to give to the work of the church. We give because of the light of creation, recreation and resurrection that motivates us and lives us, lifts us to do for others as Christ has done for us. We give for those for whom it is still dark within our church and within our broader community and world. We give to share the light of the good news of God alive in the world and in our lives. Amen. I just want to let everybody know that this Easter offering is being directed towards the UCC One Church World Mission um, for support in Ukraine. So please give generously to support people of Ukraine. There are four ways that you can make a contribution to the church in the gardens found on the last page of your bulletin. You can send a check directly to the church. You can set up a bill payment through your bank online. You can also donate through Zelle. And there is a touchless collection pay at the back of the sanctuary.
Mighty God of resurrection and redemption, we offer our gifts alongside our alleluias. We long for Easter to fill us and soak into our bones like those who were confronted in a graveyard by angels announcing, he is not here, he is risen. May we run from here, not walk, because we in every corner of the world so desperately need to hear the news the angels share. Before we speak a word, may others see in our faces that the world has been turned upside down. You win. Death loses. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And for change, let us all turn to our green hymnals. Green hymnals. Uh, hymn number 157. And when the time is right, we'll, we'll also turn to our bulletins where you'll see an extra verse. So just follow us. If you're feeling confused, we'll lead you. living Christ is in heaven and on earth from the cross to the grave from the grave to the skies and guess what back down with us again in all aspects of our lives our living Christ is with us go in peace go in the love and light of Christ of the risen living Christ and let everybody say amen, amen. and don't go far 
because we got the Easter egg hunt going outside. We've got the coffee and other things are already up down in the lounge. The smart money says go to the Easter egg hunt first. <laughs> but if you want to go to the lounge first, it's there for you. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.